something to do with my being here. Um, you know, I would say when it comes to U.S. resolve and dependability, that we're, we are, of course, subject to Democrat, democratic pressures, no better, no worse than any other country in that regard. But I'd also just leave you with uh, uh, words that Winston Churchill once said. He said, you can always count on the Americans to do the right thing usually after they've tried everything else. <laughs> and there are times where we go through trying everything else, but just stay with us. We'll get to the right point in due course. Now, the, 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 the U.S. response to help Taiwan against the Chinese threat has to be fully global. And we have not yet reached the point, I think, where we're doing this. But we need to make up for lost time. Uh, and again, it's not just on politico-military issues. We have to... Uh, deal with Chinese economic misbehavior. But we also have to build up new structures of deterrence in advance of the Chinese threat becoming concrete. Because if we wait too long, it will be too late. So, for example, economically, as I mentioned before, China has been stealing intellectual property from the United States and others for decades. Uh, we've done very little about it. But one thing that would get China's attention is if we said no goods or services made in whole or in part from stolen intellectual property can be sold in the United States. That would wake them up because so much of their economy depends on stolen property. We could broaden that. We could have Japan and South Korea, Europe say the same thing. No Chinese goods based on anybody's stolen intellectual property could be sold in those markets. You know, when I've raised this proposal, some people say, but that's so harsh. That would have such a huge impact on trade. Well, yes, it would. That's the point. Because they've stolen so much, they, they, need, to be, they need to feel the pain. Um, you know, I think that um, we need to look at adjusting supply chains from China that affect national security. I'm not talking about a new industrial policy, I think. Most of it you can leave to the free market. As people realize, we haven't reached the end of history. Political risk still exists. Uh, but on things that involve key national security uh, supplies that come from China, I think we need a very careful assessment uh, of steps to take uh, to make sure that we don't find ourselves uh, relying on China in time of crisis. Uh, and I think that uh, uh, that's something that Taiwan can be very helpful on. 
And I think this is another way to get conversations between uh, governments in Southeast Asia, in particular in Taiwan, whether or not there are full diplomatic relations, uh, to help talk about these economic issues. Now, on the political-military side, I think there's a lot more bilaterally we need to do between the United States and Taiwan. I said in 2000, so 23 years ago, that the United States should extend full diplomatic relations to Taiwan. Uh, When, when Taiwan was expelled from the United Nations, uh, George H.W. Bush, who was then the U.S. ambassador, suggested as a compromise that uh, rather than oust Taiwan and seek the PRC, that we have what he called dual recognition, that Taiwan would keep its seat and that the PRC would take the permanent seat on the Security Council, but it would keep Taiwan in the UN and it would have allowed the US to extend recognition. That was rejected by both Taiwan and the PRC at the time. Uh, that's water over the dam, but it seems to me that dual recognition still makes sense from the U.S. perspective. This would be very displeasing to Beijing. But that, again, is part of the point, because it would show that the relationship between our two countries uh, is fixed and is not going to go away. There are a lot of things below the level of full diplomatic relations we can also do, and I hope will do uh, as time goes by. But beyond that, we need uh, a much deeper and richer strategic dialogue between officials of Taiwan, not just diplomats, but military officials, intelligence officials, everybody concerned with national security. The whole Taiwanese national security team needs deeper interaction with the U.S. national security team. It's not just a question of supplying this weapon system or that weapon system. We need coordination, uh, as we have with many other allies, uh, contingency planning, thinking through uh, what China might do and how we respond. If, if you have to think it through, once an attack has taken place, it's too late. And uh, it, it, uh, it really is something Taiwan should press for. The more of uh, this kind of discussion that we have to consider the complex range of scenarios that we might face, uh, the greater the prospect uh, of uh, successfully defending Taiwan, but even more important, the greater the prospect of deterring the Chinese aggression in the first place. I really think that um, if Xi Jinping did decide to make a move on Taiwan and failed, it would be regime threatening for him. And we need to do more to convince Xi Jinping that he can't prevail.
because that ultimately is the way to success. Uh, we need uh, many more freedom of navigation exercises in the Taiwan Strait. We need to make it clear. For decades, survivors of sexual abuse suffered in silence, alone. When some had the courage to come forward, they were told they waited too long. The institutions that allowed this to go on. This problem, our defense industrial base is not as strong as it used to be. Uh, we need to improve that for global reasons, but particularly for Taiwan. Uh, and we need to uh, see that other countries like the European Union uh, also do more to, uh, to, to stand up to these Chinese threats. The head of the European Union foreign policy, Joseph Borrell of Spain, uh, called on European navies also to conduct freedom of navigation operations uh, in the Taiwan Strait. And that's a that's a real plus. And we have to tell uh, China and Russia what the consequences are if they take action against Taiwan, not just in the immediate response, but over the longer term, to uh, basically uh, excommunicate China from the international economic system if it did take military action against Taiwan or attempt uh, to uh, throw a blockade around it. Uh, there's much more that needs to be done, not just in the military space, not just making Taiwan a porcupine, but getting more cooperation from other countries in the region uh, and around the world. Because as I said earlier, the more Taiwan is embedded with other countries in collective security, collective defense efforts, the lower the likelihood that China will take military action. Uh, for example, uh, the, the, uh, uh, in, in the Asia, uh, in the Indo-Pacific region right now, there's a lot of new thinking because of the concern many countries have, not just uh, Taiwan and the threat it faces, but all along China's periphery. Uh, for example, the so-called Quad involving Japan, India, Australia, and the United States. Uh, it's not NATO by any stretch of the imagination. There isn't going to be an East Asian NATO anytime soon. But there are steps that can be taken uh, by countries that share a common concern about Chinese belligerence to uh, guard against it and to convince the Chinese that uh, any action they would take would be far more costly than what they could expect. So the Quad has an interesting uh, possible future to it. Maybe South Korea should join and become a quint. Uh, there, are, there are a lot of different things that could be done, a lot of cooperation that other countries, including Taiwan, could have with the Quad in, uh, in areas military and non-military. This is all something that people here in Taiwan should be talking more about. Uh, I'm sure you're familiar with the AUKUS project, the 
uh, cooperation between Australia, the United Kingdom, and the United States to build nuclear-powered submarines for Australia. Significant in many, many important respects. Number one, it brings the United Kingdom back into the Indo-Pacific. You know, after they gave Hong Kong back to China, their role in the Pacific uh, region diminished significantly. This is a way to get the Brits back in, and I think that's entirely positive. Uh, it, it puts, in time, it will put eight to ten nuclear-powered uh, attack submarines into the Indo-Pacific. Uh, the only threat they face is from China. Everybody knows what this is about. Um, and it's a, it's a way of sharing this technology uh, in ways that I think strengthen the possibility of peace and security by strengthening the deterrence structures. Many other countries could find ways to emulate AUKUS. I think Japan will want to have nuclear-powered submarines in due course, and I think it's time for that to happen. This is the sort of thing um, that at many different levels with many different kinds of uh, self-defense structures that Taiwan could think about, too. Uh, it, it goes uh, very much with the idea that the more that you want to protect the island, the more activities you have to undertake internationally. Because the more China sees a broad array of countries uh, determined not to succumb to their efforts to establish hegemony, the less the chance that they will take those kinds of actions. There are lots of ways, uh, even without state-to-state -state communication through non-governmental uh, organizations, or through government intelligence channels. You know, one thing about intelligence agencies is they don't hand out daily press releases of who they meet with. Uh, and that's why governments often use their intelligence agencies for communication that might otherwise be handled through uh, their foreign affairs uh, ministries. That's, that's something to uh, think about as well. So I think uh, that uh, to conclude here, and I know in the, in the next panel we'll have a lot of chance to cover other issues too, but I think it's important to understand since we've left the post-Cold War era that things are moving very fast internationally. The geopolitical tectonic plates around the world are shifting and they're moving at a pace that means that for Taiwan in particular, uh, uh, its pace of activity uh, needs to keep up. And this should be a top priority uh, both in Taipei and in Washington, with uh, as, as many efforts as are now expended on strengthening the partnership, we all need to do more. Uh, we're, we're very likely uh, uh, facing Cold War levels of threat uh, for the foreseeable future. Uh, I, I was around and I remember when uh, China bombarded what uh, we then called Kimoi and Matsu. And uh, the government.
government here and the government in Washington stood up to those attacks. About 25 years ago, I went to Ken Men, as it's called now, and I have to tell you, I was amazed to stand on the beaches and look across and see PRC islands within swimming distance for a good swimmer. Not me today, but within swimming distance for a good swimmer. And in 1958, we stood against that and prevented the loss of Kimoi and Matsu. So uh, people talk about how threatening it is here today. Uh, we've seen this before. China was much weaker then. It's a bigger threat now. But a lot of this depends on resolve and determination by the people who are threatened. And I think that as we face these higher risks and challenges, strengthening the alliance uh, is critical. Uh, let's be clear. Uh, we've seen in trying to negotiate uh, an end of the nuclear weapons programs of North Korea and Iran trying to stop Russia and China from engaging in proliferation, trying to push back on terrorist groups in places like Afghanistan. Uh, there's, a, there's a real similarity in the way they negotiate and what they do when they reach agreements. Authority Want to see what goes into making NOW supplements? Take a look inside NOW's manufacturing facility, where they produce more than 60 million supplement bottles each year. NOW's quality starts long before the manufacturing process, only using ingredients that meet their strict requirements and come from trusted suppliers. Here in their state-of-the-art in-house labs, their team does more than 15,000 tests a month on these ingredients and the finished I don't think people in the U.S. Or, or here in Taiwan or many other places really fully appreciate that. And I just want to close by reminding everybody uh, what I said earlier. These were originally words of Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld, but I think, uh, I think they, they hold true across the board. Strength is not provocative. Weakness is provocative. And as Ronald Reagan used to put it, the best way to preserve peace is through strength. Uh, nobody wants war. Uh, it's not Taiwan that's flying sophisticated weapons-capable drones. Uh, near Chinese territory. It's not Taiwan that's threatening the status quo. The threat's coming from the mainland, and as soon as we realize that and deal with it, Taiwan will be safer, the U.S. will be safer, and the world will be safer. And at peace. Thank you very much. his sharpie pen and he would point to the tip and say see that that's Taiwan and then he'd point to the resolute desk in the Oval Office which is a huge piece of furniture and he'd say that's China 
And that's what, in his mind, made a difference. Uh, but Donald Trump was an aberration in American political life. And it's not going to be reflected when we get, I think, to the 2024 election. There are doubts about uh, uh, other Western countries. Uh, I'm sure Emmanuel Macron, the president of France, didn't win himself a lot of friends on this island when he went back to uh, France after visiting China and said that uh, uh, he wanted to have a global strategic partnership with China. That sounds a lot like an alliance. Uh, I'm sure you saw the, what the Chinese ambassador to France who uh, said about uh, uh, the lack of independence of the former republics of the Soviet Union. I don't know what it is in France, but maybe the ambassador and President Macron have uh, have a relationship and exchange these views before. Uh, I don't think that what Macron said really reflects where Europe is. I think uh, the but but it it shows the work that has to be done uh, uh, in order to maintain Taiwan's strength and diplomatic relations. Uh, around the world. We all talk about defense spending, for example. Uh, the United States spends about three and a quarter percent of its gross domestic product on defense. Bolton. 推动美国走向战争的人，任何战争。波顿·詹姆斯将于四月底访台。由于他已经宣布角逐美国2024年共和党总统候选人，将成为首位访台的2024年美国总统参选人。外交部次长田中光表示，台湾议题势必成为美国总统大选重要辩论主题之一。民进党立委赵天麟在质询时提及台湾对美国总统大选的影响。田中光表示，台湾议题不光是美国关注。全世界包括日本、韩国和我国周遭的国家，大家都很关注台湾以及台海的安全和稳定。波顿在美国政坛算是有相当知名度，外交部欢迎任何支持台湾走向自由民主道路的友人来访。田光中认为，美国必须关注自身经济安全与整个大环境。台湾议题势必成为他们总统大选辩论中一个非常重要的主题之一。媒体询问波顿来台讯息时，田美国前国家安全顾问波顿窜访台湾，为的是制造选前热场，哗众取宠，捞取政治选民眼球和经济资源。此一症状明显成为美国2024大选的台海危机及乌克兰危机和困境的占据反中亲台舞台。可见。谁解决台湾问题，为美国带来利益，谁就能获得台湾2024选民的支持。Former U.S. National Security Advisor Bolton visited Taiwan in order to create pre-election excitement, grandstanding, and gain the attention of political voters and economic resources. This symptom has clearly become the crisis in the Taiwan Strait in the 2024. U.S. election following the Ukrainian.
与台湾关系法（英语 Taiwan Relations Act） 缩写为 TRA， 是一部现行的美国国内法。一九七九年一月一日，美国政府终止与此前称中华民国政府间的所有正式外交关系，转而承认中华人民共和国政府是代表联合国宪章中国中华民国唯一合法政府。台湾的定义。Act 法案定位台湾治理当局此后为非中华民国、非官方、非政府机构Taiwan Relations Act English Taiwan Relations Act, abbreviated as TRA, it is an existing domestic law of the United States. On January 1, 1979, the U.S. government terminated all official diplomatic relations with what was previously called the government of the Republic of China, recognized in. Taiwan 当局违反 Act 的三大限制，继续盗用中华民国自我非法授权沿用案宪章 Rock 自欺欺人，瞒天过海包装中华民国概念，混淆时效性，以假乱真，欺世盗名的指鹿为马行径，违法违宪的概括不当。中华民国与台湾两概念划分不同，并列不当，自相矛盾，白马非马。The Taiwan authorities violated the three major restrictions of the Act, continued to misappropriate the Republic of China, illegally authorized themselves to follow the uncharted rock, deceived themselves and crossed the city package the concept of the Republic of China, confused the time. The Taiwan authorities violated the three major restrictions of the Act, continued to misappropriate the Republic of China, illegally authorized themselves to follow the uncharted rock, deceived themselves and crossed the city package the concept of the Republic of China, confused the time.
The Taiwan authorities violated the three major restrictions of the act, continued to misappropriate the Republic of China, illegally authorized themselves to follow the uncharted rock, deceived themselves and crossed the city package the concept of the Republic of China, confused the time. Taiwan当局违法ag的三大限制 千万别忘记了 稳定根本不是两岸现状这些台湾关系法的明文明示的规矩和法律限制条件 Don't forget that the civil war of the Republic of China civil war started in 1947 and the war has not yet ended. The peace agreement has not yet been signed and the state of war is still at war. The mainland army planes fly around. Don't forget that the civil war of the Republic of China civil war started in 1947 and the war has not yet ended. The peace agreement has not yet been signed and the state of war is still at war. The mainland army planes fly around hot the all over. <laughs> <音>爱因斯坦说 
。一个人的真正价值，首先决定于他在什么程度上和在什么意义上从自我解放出来。我在美国十六年，在探索解放台湾问题上。真正的得到了一次次的思想和理论的释放和社会意义上的解放。政治家理想的实现要比其他专家更艰难、更遥远，要用漫长的人生经历为其机缘和机遇做好充分的准备。古今中外的许多政治家的成长和成功，都是在特殊的社会环境中经历了无数艰苦卓绝的个人奋斗和共同奋斗所取得的。